Welcome to the Beating Heartland, created by Denver Bauman. Episode 1, The Basement. Okay. Great bedside manner. Mm. Oh, great. The microphone. Okay. <clears throat> Formalities, I guess. My name is Denver Bauman. 23. Male. It's January 3rd, 2023. I'm the radio host for the weekly installment of Heartland Supernatural for MWR, located out of Illinois. Basically, it's a show for people from the Midwest to send in weird, unexplainable things that have happened to them. On a good day, we get, like, a thousand listeners? Mostly middle-aged moms enjoying some peace after putting their kids to bed. I've worked for them for the last three years? I've heard it all. Monsters in the woods, serial killers lurking in the attic, ghosts, sickness, disappearances, you get the gist. But you don't want me to talk about that. No, you want me to talk about... What was it again? Talk about yourself. What happened? <laughs> And I'd prefer to tell it to someone I can see and hear. Hi, on the other side of the glass. I'm not dangerous. I'm not going to bite your head off if you come in here. Why now, anyway? I contacted you all two months ago. Practically begged you all to listen to me. Why bring me in now? What changed? <sighs> Great. No answers. I mean, didn't know what I expected. Great customer service! <laughs> Let's start at the basement, shall we? You have the file laid out, all nice in front of me. Fair. That's where it began. I think. A year ago now, on January 3rd, 2022, I went into my mother's basement for the first time in 14 years, looking for- What? Hey, wh what's that noise? Don't touch that dial if you want to live. Heartland Supernatural. Your go-to place in the Midwest for everything that goes bump in the night starts now. Hello, listeners. I'm your humble horror host, Denver Bauman. Today's episode is a special one. We're talking basements. Not those furnished extra floors where your dad plays cards with the guys each Sunday. No, we're talking about that cobweb-infested, mold-ridden dark hole with a single light bulb that barely works. Where your parents keep all your old stuff they never wanted to keep in the first place. Ask anyone what the scariest room in their house is, and often, you will hear the basement. Why is that? I mean, I know I've talked about my basement with my therapist many times. <laughs> Well, in today's episode, we have three stories sent in by fans about times their basements gave them quite a fright. Stay tuned to hear those right after a word from our sponsor. I was eight years old when it happened. We were living in the Shannon house still. Barely 800 people in that town. Village? I never learned the difference. I, anyway... Mom was still working as a teacher. I'd wait for her at the playground after school as she finished up. We'd walk home together. At least, that's how it was when I was younger. When I turned eight, she said I was old enough to go home on my own. It was scary at first. I'd barely been anywhere alone before. 
If mom was going to the store, I'd go with her. If she was hanging out with her friends, I'd go with her. The thought of being by myself scared me. <laughs> Figured you want to write that down. In her defense, the house was only a block from the school, and I was a pretty responsible kid. Also, this was a town where crime just didn't happen. I mean, it's the Midwest. Even if there was a killer, it wouldn't take long to find them. Well, what happened to so-and-so? Well, Dave was with him last at the barbecue and left around the same time. Well, there you go then. As I said, 800 people and the neighboring towns didn't have much more. We considered a town of 3,000 to be a big city. So, I went home by myself. And I got used to it. I mostly sat outside under the weeping willow tree and read. But that got boring sometimes. There was another reason. I can't remember right now. Anyway, I got bored. Especially on nights when Mom didn't come home until 7. The school was starting to get more kids, and that meant more papers to grade. I started to explore the house. I mean, there wasn't much to explore after having lived there for as long as I could remember. It was a two-story building with an adjoining garage. Pretty standard stuff in a small Midwest town. But searching it alone, I don't know. You know suddenly it was my space. And over a few weeks, I knew that house inside and out. Except the basement. <sighs> I don't want you to get the wrong idea. As a therapist, you've probably heard a ton of stories about the basement. It's a fairly common childhood fear. I mean, you could point me to several reasons why I was afraid of it. And you're probably right. But this wasn't normal. There wasn't even a door. It was just a small wooden trap door in the closet. Yeah, I know. Weird. I didn't even know we had a basement. One day, it was just there while rummaging around and I moved a few boxes and there it was beckoning me, drawing me in to see what was past the small plank of wood. I'm not trying to be poetic. There was this pulling inside of me I needed to see. I put the boxes back and closed the door, just in time too. Mom walked in the house just a few seconds later. Don't ask me why I hid that I found it. She looked at me strangely for the rest of the evening. And when I stared at her, I felt odd. Like she was someone I didn't know anymore. Someone who betrayed me. For the next week, I, I tried to ignore the almost constant nagging to see what was down there. I, I don't know if it was childhood curiosity or something prying into my thoughts, but... By the end of the week, it consumed me. I had to know. So the moment I got home from school on Friday, there I was, the small door in the ground with a simple rusted handle. I pulled. It wasn't easy. After several minutes of heaving, I finally dislodged the wood. The creek was awful. There was a ladder going down into the dark. I don't know how long I stood there. And that's when I heard it. I, I know, I, I know, I was probably hallucinating or had an overworked imagination or something. But I heard the words so, so clearly. Come down. Come down. And I did. A big thank you to Elizabeth Bales, Matthew Holdings, and Ben Hines for sending in their stories to Heartland Supernatural. 
Those were some pretty bone-tingling basements. If I'm not mistaken, they've all sent in stories before. It just goes to show how truly terrifying a basement can be. Is it just the fear of the dark at work, or something more sinister? For centuries, humans have investigated the dark and wondered what dangers were waiting just beyond their vision. Was that creaking I heard just some wood settling? Or something waiting to pounce? Was that breeze someone breathing down my neck? What is really waiting for me past this black ocean? Or are we more afraid of the secrets we might discover in our basements? What are my parents hiding from me? What dark secrets are my grandparents keeping locked away? What might I find if I delve too deep? Something deep in our mind knows we are not supposed to be underground, away from the sun. If we delve too deep into our house, will we be able to escape unscathed? I know I didn't. Thank you all again for listening. Please, stay tuned. The light didn't work. Not surprising, but still. The ground crunched under my feet. It, it wasn't cement or wood, it was just gravel. My brain imagined stepping on bones. Sometimes my brain comes up with pictures that make the situation so much worse. I waited by the ladder for my eyes to readjust to the light. They did, after a couple of minutes. Cobwebs covered pretty much every surface. Junk littered the floor. An old bike, broken picture frames, a large bookshelf that was all moldy. I couldn't see the back wall. I kept walking. I was trying to be quiet, but it was pretty much impossible with the gravel. The room just kept going. Every time I thought I would hit the back wall, there was just more dark. The air was musty, warm, and wrong. Part of me wanted to run. It was screaming at me, but something else kept pushing me forward. I found the back wall, eventually. It was stained black. In front of the wall were a bunch of crates with lids on them. I ignored them at the time, but I wish I hadn't. What was in them? I need to know. I... <clears throat> <sighs> Sorry. Um. Instead, I reached my hand toward the black wall. My finger brushed against it. Soot. Suddenly, the whole room burst into light, and it felt like I was burning. I screamed, and something deep screamed all around me. Screams of someone in agony. The fire roared around me, and the air became suffocating. The flames licked my face, blinded my eyes. And thankfully, I passed out. After a, a while, my eyes opened, and the room was dark again. I stood up, looked around. The room was completely normal, like nothing had happened. Then a hand gripped my shoulder. Spinning, I saw a face inches from mine. The man's eyes were wide. His whole body burnt and crumbling away and whispered. Help! I screamed. The face crumbled away into ash on the ground and I ran. The room seemed to stretch on forever. The whispering echoed all around me. Help! Help you! Finally, after giving up hope, I ran into the ladder, threw myself up it, slammed the door shut behind me. I sat on the floor, 
gasping. Mom returned an hour later. I didn't say anything. She could tell I was upset. I think I made up some story about a bully or something. I never went down there again. The session over already? Oh. <clears throat> Great. How did you get a hold of my therapy sessions? <laughs> I thought those were, you know, confidential. <sighs> okay. Well, great. Um, obviously, you've done your research. Both disconcerting and honestly, a little bit of a relief. <laughs> I mean, you cared enough about me to do your research, so cool. Maybe I'm not crazy. Anyway, you have my therapy sessions, so I don't need to talk about what happened when I was eight, thankfully. So, the rest of the story. Yeah, I returned to the basement. That strange, nagging feeling returned to me after I talked about it in therapy. Which you just heard, and I... I decided to go back almost exactly a year ago. You know that feeling, where something feels the same, but completely different? That's how returning to Shannon felt. I hadn't been there in five years, give or take. The school looked the same. The house looked the- well, it looked dirtier, but Mom was a clean freak, so... That tracked. Something was off, though. I mean, maybe I was just taller. I broke into the house. I looked up the family before going there. It's pretty easy nowadays to find out people's schedules. Just a quick search on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and I had it. What hours of the day no one would be home? What days of the week they were off work? How often the dog had a sitter? All of it. It didn't take me long to climb up the overhang at the back of the house. I snuck in through the bedroom. At least, it had been a bedroom when we were there. Now it was just some kind of exercise room. I walked downstairs. The trapdoor was still there, so I hadn't imagined it, thankfully. The hole was smaller than I remembered. As I climbed into it, one of the rungs snapped. I fell face first into the gravel. I quickly stood up and looked around. All the junk was there. Old bicycle, broken bookshelf, all of it. I still don't know what's weirder. That mom hadn't taken any of the stuff, or that the new owners hadn't stored anything else down here. Walking to the back of the room took too long again. Like some stretched out space. There it was, the soot blackened wall. Everything looked the same, like I had stepped into some time capsule, preserved for a reason I can't begin to understand. My hand almost reached out to touch it. That sounds crazy, I know. I needed to know if it was real, and it was just the start of a string of horrible things that have happened to me. That's why I'm here, right? The crates were still up against the wall. It was not opening the crates that nagged at me. I knelt, opened one. There were files, medical records, discarded baby toys. Not what I was expecting. It, it detailed the events of when my mom went to the hospital to give birth. She had been struggling a lot with the pregnancy. Just three months prior, she'd been in the hospital for an overdose on sleeping pills. She survived, but it messed up the pregnancy. There was an ultrasound of me at eight months, and it did not look good. It looked all wrong. H how was that me? From the files, my dad had stopped appearing about the same time as the overdose. She gave birth. Well, she had a C-section. 
She was too weak to have me. She was still recovering, so they had to force me out. <laughs> it looks like everything went well. There was a weird lack of documents from the time in the hospital, but I didn't think about it at the time. I opened the next crate. There were a bunch of photos, records, about the church I grew up in. Mom still goes there. She was always religious. There were photos of my baptism, singing and special music, several photos of the pastor, what seemed like a ton of notes of sermons. <laughs> I, I don't know why Mom kept it all. I, I figure it just means a lot to her. I opened the last crate. There were photo albums. Hundreds of pictures of Mom and some guy. I, I could only assume it was my dad. I had never seen what he looked like. Whenever I asked her about him, she just shut down the conversation. There were pictures of vacations, nights out, romantic getaways, time with family and friends. A whole other part of my mom's life that I had never seen or heard before. I always assumed he was some uncaring jerk who couldn't be bothered to stick around with mom. Or worse, was ashamed of me or something. But seeing that smiling, seemingly caring guy kind of threw me. For the first time, I understood him. I found it hard to be mad. Something about that face was nagging at me. I put everything back in the crates after taking some pictures on my phone. I did take one of the photos of my mom and dad. I put it in my jacket. It was nice. Looked like it was at a church picnic. They were having a potluck. His arm was around her shoulder. They were smiling. I could see children, blurry, playing in the background. The pastor watching everyone. I think he's still preaching there, actually. I stood up to leave. But when I looked up, he was standing there. The burning man. I didn't move. We stared at each other. Slowly, I started to move away from him, towards the ladder. He just looked sad. I don't know why. I yelled at him, just, Who are you? Looked like he wanted to cry. His mouth struggled to open. No noise came out except for a moan. He lowered his head, looked at the crates, noticed that I had disturbed them or something. I quickly turned around and sprinted toward the ladder, hurled myself up the rungs, slammed the door behind me. That's when I heard it. Son! And I realized that's why the face in the photo was familiar to me. I had seen my father before. I ran. I still look at the photos and documents. Can't make heads or tails of most of it. It's hard to look at them. I mean, my brain's been kind of fuzzy. Why is my dad's ghost, or whatever he is, what was he trying to tell me? And why have so many weird things happened to me? That document I sent you guys about my life? All true. Th this last year I've been trying to piece it all together, you know? Took a lot of vacation time from my job, which did not make my boss happy. But I had to check. My past, dad's past, the town's past, anything that could help tie it all together into some type of clarity, control, I, I don't know. I barely have any answers, so I, I, I came here. W willingly, okay? Y you have tapes of my therapy sessions. Y you've been listening to my show. That box that I gave you has everything. So I, I can't keep it all straight alone. You don't have to keep up this charade of locking me up in here by myself. You're going to listen. You're listening now. There's a lot more parts, and this is going to get crazy fast. 
So when, whenever you feel like chiming in and bringing one of your guys in here so we can actually, you know, talk, great. Because I need answers. And I'm really hoping you can give them. The Beating Heartland was written and performed by Denver Bauman. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review us on whatever streaming platform you are using. Follow us online at The Beating Heartland. Thank you for listening.